Good morning. Hey, Tariq. Good morning. Morning, morning. How are you doing? Uh, it's doing. It's good. Yes, it's good. I I hear to this, this I hear blocks of, of blocks are being made in glory. Blocks blocks are being made, uh, and crypto prices are falling off a cliff. So you know what else is new? <laughs> what else is uh, new? Listen, diamond hands, diamond hands. Um, welcome to episode nine. <laughs> welcome to episode nine of Similia this week, where we recap uh, the Similia protocol and app progress uh, for the past week. And um, of course, uh, Jack Zamplin is our VP of product and our product lead. He knows everything and everyone um, on Similia touches all pieces of all engineering and uh, can give us an insight to what's happening. So Jack, why don't we start off with um, your, your, your crypto bags? Are you still um, in the three comma club or are you now in the two comma club? Trace commas, only trace commas. <laughs> only trace commas. Does your do your doors go like this, or do they do they not go like this? <laughs> uh, well, that's funny. Uh, my my doors have never quite gone like this yet, but maybe <laughs> soon. We'll see. All right. Well, um, let's start off with uh, we had pairings, uh, which was announced um, last week. So I think pairings now uh, is now about a week out. Uh, and what are your thoughts on pairings, and what is the new hotness that everybody in, who wants to be a sommelier and being a liquidity provider in the Ethereum uh, ecosystem needs to know about this, the new improvements and, and this new features. Pairings, very exciting launch last week. It's the easiest and quickest way to add liquidity to Uniswap V3. And I think that we just had a huge litmus test of how the protocol worked. Um, liquidity that you added last week, uh, you're still in range. Um, right. Even after that huge market correction, so the uh, the prices that we're suggesting you add liquidity at uh, tested in real market conditions, tested in a huge uh, pull that pullback uh, looks great. So if, if you have a if you're like on that Uniswap V3 add liquidity page and you see these two price things and you're like, what do I put here? We've already done all the work for you. We munched some numbers and we're giving you some pretty intelligent predictions that will. Uh, maximize your fees uh, and, and minimize your time out of band. Mm -hmm. um, the, e the ETH USDC suggestions were almost exactly what the price has been over the last few right. weeks. Over would, the last would, week, quick question. which I thought was extremely impressive. There are three sentiments on the pairing yeah. side, correct? What are yeah. they? Bullish, bearish, and neutral. So the range for bearish is not the same as the range for bullish, right? Yeah, the range for bearish so in the case of ETH USDC, um, the range for bearish would be you would say, you would be expecting the Ethereum price to go lower. Okay. okay. Um, and so your range wants to include more lower prices, while the bearish bullish. one, bullish, sorry, and then <laughs> bullish would would skew the prices towards the upper end of the distribution. Whereas the neutral just picks the picks the the middle of the distribution. Got it. You know what I noticed is that um, my my pool choices for that same pair were bullish, um, and I'm still in range. What does that tell me? Uh, what that tells you is, I mean, so I guess your range is probably <laughs> some. <laughs> You're to say, All right, no, no trick questions in the Samilia this week. <laughs> Uh, that's actually a good question. What does that mean? Uh, that means you're still in rage. You're still making money. That's great, um, which is good. So uh, that, that's exciting. Um, the way that we're making predictions is based on the past data from Uniswap v3 and a little right. bit of Uniswap v2 data. Right. And we basically look at data over the last couple of weeks and throw a band around where prices are likely to land over yeah. the coming couple of weeks, yeah. because we want these predictions to last for a little while, especially with gas prices as high as they are. Um, so yeah, that's great that you picked you you were bullish and uh, the market dumped on you and uh, still in bad. That's uh, that, that's good news. So I'm thinking that at least the bands are wide enough that people apes like me can set it and forget it, right? I think what yeah. what we're seeing here is that Somalia is still stupid easy for stupid people like me who just want to be able to set it and forget it. The bands are not infinite, but the bands are wide enough that I'm still gonna make money. Either if I'm even if I'm bearish or bullish, even if the market kind of you know does these crazy durations, and I want to say it, my my pool positions are still in place. Um, I'm making one percent daily APY a day. It's nuts. Um, I'm having a blast. 
And I, I don't even take a look at it that much. And I think um, pairings, you know, I mean, I know um, I paid my taxes, dear IRS, but I, I really want to say pairings has done a great job uh, for me as a user, as a dumb ape in generating. And, and congrats to you and, and the Simulate team for making an app that's so easy to use uh, that anybody could just, you know, make a guess and continue to make money. Yeah, and just to tack on to that, um, the migration of volume from Uniswap V2 to V3 is happening very, very quickly. Um, okay. Hayden posted some stats about the the rundown yesterday, which is actually funny enough, you know, when prices go crazy, either in the up or down direction, volume spikes. Because right. more people are looking, more people are interested, more people are trading. Yeah. Um, so yesterday was actually the highest volume day ever for Uniswap. Woo. And I think Uniswap V3 itself took about a third of that volume. Woo. And uh, so with a lot less liquidity servicing a lot more trades, there's a lot of opportunity for LPs on Uniswap V3 right now. And, you know, again and again, I'm just going to keep saying it because it's true. And I haven't seen anything else that even comes close. Some finance is the easiest way to add liquidity to Uniswap V3. Full stop. Go give it a try. <laughs> you, yes, you you may shell. You may shell. <laughs> this is your show. Uh, all right. Let's now switch over to protocol. All right. Yeah. So we're, we, we have exciting stuff uh, on the app side. Now we're looking at a protocol. What's happening with the protocol? I hear blocks. I hear blocks falling. Yes. So we have been talking for a while at this point, I think for the length of this show, about the gravity refactor. The gravity refactor is now making blocks which is Woo! a huge milestone. Um, so we have completed the meat of the work on the Cosmos side. Mm -hmm. um, we are now working to get the, the piece that sits between Ethereum and Cosmos yeah. um, working again while adding test coverage and it, it ensuring correctness on a number of areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're splitting up into a number of pairing teams to do that. And that work is going really, really quickly. Um, we are still potentially on track to have it passing the integration testing framework by end of week, racing to try to do that. If not, it's going to be early next week. Um, so that's a huge, huge milestone. Um, you know, this gravity bridge, gravity bridge technology is the core of what we are building on top of it. And pretty much everything else is in order of magnitude less complex than this gravity bridge piece. Yep. And this is the piece that we really need to get right, which is why we've spent so much time and engineering effort on it. Um, so where we are right now is great. Um, yep. We've made a ton. I, like, I really cannot under, understate the amount of progress that, that the it, core team has made on that over the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's huge and uh, it, it's much better. So when we're talking about the pieces of the sommelier protocol, um, yeah, yeah Zisla, we'll, we can definitely address that too. Um, when we're talking about the different pieces of the protocol, there's the chain and the gravity bridge, and that's great. Yep. Um, there's the allocation module, and then yep. there's the seller contract over on Ethereum. So just yep. quick updates on all those. Yep. In order to finalize the allocation module over on Cosmos, we need to finish up this gravity bridge thing. We've got it where we need the allocation module is where we need it. We're going to be able to pick it up and integrate that with the gravity bridge very soon after we finish. But the other thing that that um, allocation module depends on is the seller contract over on Ethereum. Yeah. Because what does the allocation module do? It just sends rebalance calls up to that seller module. Yeah. So uh, that needs to be finished. Steven and the, and the team that's working on the Viper and Solidity contracts for this uh, has made some great breakthroughs. Yep. And this is, a, this is an excellent example of the app development that we're doing right now that's just kind of a classic Ethereum dApp, what people think of as an Ethereum dApp, yep. driving the protocol development as well, and us deploying early versions of stuff that's going to be used in the protocol on yep. the app. Awesome. So what is what is a rebalance call for a liquidity position? It's made up of a few different things. You need to uh, remove liquidity, you need to do a trade, and then you need to add liquidity. And that's what a rebalance is basically. Mm -hmm. So what have we been building for the app? We've been building add liquidity, remove liquidity right. in a single in, in, in trade, like i.e. a right. single sided add. So We've shipped all those pieces. <laughs> the app team is integrating those pieces. And then now on the protocol side, we're putting those pieces together into this more complex machinery. 
that's going to provide a much better user experience and tighter liquidity ranges on V3 um, in pooling of fees. So uh, that piece is coming along nicely, expecting that to an early version of that to land late this week, early next. Um, so we're very quickly getting to a, a place where we're going to be able to put all these protocol pieces together and uh, test them in a test net um, to the question of can validators join a test net soon? Do they have to be ready? So um, I know. We're going to be doing an internal test net, uh, hopefully late next week. And then I will have a more firm timeline on when we're going to do public test nets. One thing that I'm going to say about this is that there's a lot more complexity to running Sommelier than running other Cosmos chains. Mm. Most other Cosmos chains right now, there's a single binary and it's yep. kind of a set it and forget it for validators. Yep. Um, with Sommelier, there's two additional binaries that users are going to be running that connect to a host of backend services. Yep. Um, it is going to be vastly more complex than a, than a, a, other setups that you're familiar with. There's more key material to deal with. Yep. There's security assumptions that are made by various pieces of the stack that you know you need to educate yourself on. So with that in mind, we are going to be likely launching with a smaller validator set. I think okay. we're start targeting somewhere in the 20 to 40 validator range. All right. So there will be a limited number of slots. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot more communication about this coming out soon. Yep. Um, if you are a validator, if you have experience running on more than five networks, if you are excited about a challenge. Um, there's a lot of slashing conditions involved with some of this stuff too, that is yeah. gonna be the first time deploying this out in the wild. Yeah. Um, if you are ready for a challenge, please hit us up. We're looking for the best of the best validators to help us run this chain and provide excellent quality of service to users of our new Swap V3. This is excellent, congrats. And uh, I, I do know that the validator community is excited to participate. Um, definitely uh, want to see that information get out there so uh, folks can, you know, you know, confirm that they're ready for the challenge. Let's do yep. it. All right. So we covered validators. We covered protocol. We covered app. What else are we missing? Anything else this week that is super hot? Hmm. I think last week, uh, wait, wait, I think last week you, uh, wait, let me see what else. Um, uh, let me see. Anything else? I think that's it, right? I think, I think that's the big stuff, you yeah. know, uh, you guys did that, the, the NFT awards for, yes. uh, sommelier yeah. liquidity providers, which, which yes. I thought was really exciting. Yeah. Love, yeah. love the art. The Giving back to the community with great art. Um, and, uh, congratulations to the sommeliers on our platform, uh, an app who received their, uh, NFT tokens. Um, and, uh, we have more to come for the community. So we want to give back to the community encourage the community to continue with us on this journey. You got it. Nice. All right. Yeah, well, I, I, I thought that was really cool. And then, you know, we kind of talked about the market stuff earlier, earlier in the podcast, but that's kind of what's been going on this week. Yeah. Um, it's, it, I, I will say, you know, one of the things that's nice about watching those market drawdowns, whenever I see something like that, I just get into the code and I start building again. Um, and uh, it's a, it's a really nice part of crypto, I would say. I know. <laughs> you have Be those able to distract to yourself. Exactly. <laughs> when you need to distract yourself from, from the blood, you just build. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's go. Thanks, Jack. Bye. Nice.